What's going on guys and girls? I want to do something a little bit different today. So what I'm going to do for this video is I want to highlight my favorite sounding ballys. Now we all know that each ballet has its own unique sound that the click clack, the back and forth, the rhythm, the noise, and there's a, a variety of factors that affect the way a particular ballet sound. And what I want to do today is I want to just kind of like thumb through my collection and go over the ballets that, that to me are my favorite sounding ballets because there's a multitude of different things that affect that. So we're going to take a look at a good chunk of my collection today and go over which ones I think sound the best and why they sound the best. So let's get to it guys. All right, now, each and every Bally has its own unique sound profile. It's almost like a, like a fingerprint or the pattern and the color of a person's iris, but I'm only gonna briefly highlight each, each of these ballets, otherwise this video is going to be 35 minutes long, so. But to start out, this is the Dustin Larson XL. This is a pretty hefty ballet. It comes in at just under 11 inches. It's a sandwich style construction ballet. It runs on bushings, and when he made it, he made it and shipped it with um, titanium sets of spacers and a zirconium set of spacers. The zirconium set is 0.2 ounces heavier, I think, but it's a, it's a Zen pin style Bally. Now, most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time, at least to me, Zen pin Bally's usually sound, sound better than, than Tang pin Bally's, but I do have Tang pin Bally's that I really do enjoy the sound of. This has carbon fiber scales and and I just wanna just wanna say that Dustin Larson, he's one of my favorite ballet makers. He doesn't do any production, it's all like custom mid-tech stuff, but if you could ever get on his list or get one, definitely do it. It took me like almost a year worth of, of tracking this down from person to person until I finally had an opportunity to make an offer for it. And luckily I got it, but this is definitely one of my favorite sounding ballets. I don't think I don't think I've ever showed this to you guys before. I do have a review planned on this at some point, but I've been really busy with work lately, so I haven't gotten around to it. But let's go on to the next one. Now this you guys have seen before. I have a full review up on my channel if you wanted to go check it out. This is the J-Line Hellcat. Also a sandwich style construction bally, but this however does not run on bushings. This runs on caged steel bearings. I think in my review I said ceramic bearings, but it is in fact steel bearings. This is just a, uh, this is another Zen pin style knife. This is hidden Zen pins however, but I do really like the sound of this knife. This has very, uh, very thick, stout, and sturdy handles, to say the least. They're, uh, they're pretty hefty, but it's the, the perfect tolerances and the bearings and the, you know, the, the solidity of this that gives it part of its sound profile. It's a uh, full length titanium spacers titanium liners, G10 scales. Now the handles are pretty thick on this, but with the way they're profiled and the way this, uh, these little scallops are, are ground into them, it, it feels very well in the hand. And, but I have big hands though, so a person who doesn't have as big hands as I do might think otherwise. Now with Zen pins, I think uh, like partly what could affect the sound difference is like like the thickness of the blade stock, for example. If 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 a really thin stock is used, then that's going to affect the sound when the when the pins or or the thickness of the pins say like that XL by uh, the Dustin Larson XL we just looked at that has really fat 
Zen pins. So, so I feel like that definitely affects the way, the way that that sounds or the way any Zen pin Batley sounds for that matter. Now let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> this one here, I just showed you the unboxing of, and let me tell you that this is just an incredible Batley. I was just completely blown away when when I unboxed this Bally. This is one of like the very, very few Bally's I think I've opened and out of the box had perfect, perfect tolerances and was tuned perfectly also. The fit and finish on this is just incredible. And I don't know how the fuck Ryo does this, but there is no other Bally that sounds even close to this. One of the sexiest sounding valleys I've ever heard, at least in my opinion. But this is also a sandwich style construction valley. Has a hidden Zen pin design, which means there's no screws through the sandwich slabs holding the pins in. They're just like, like hidden. But full length titanium spacers. I think partly what affects the way that this sounds and gives it that like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but what I think it is, is there's big pockets milled out in the inside of these, uh, these handle slabs. And it only comes in at four and a half ounces. It feels really, really well in the hand. It's just a tiny bit of, of handle bias, almost neutral. But I think those pockets milled into the inside of the slabs gives it part of its sound profile because I think when what's happening is when the Zen pins hit against the, the tang, the sound is almost echoing around inside there because there's a big open open cavity in there. And I think that's what gives this uh, the Konohishi its sound. Because it's one of the absolute best sounding ballys in my opinion. Now let's uh, let's go on to the next one. Now this is a tank pin knife that I really, really, really do like the sound of. This is the Max Ace Pelican. I did show you guys the unboxing and we did a full review on this already. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but it's a, a channel style bally, which means the handles are not two slabs bolted together, but instead milled out of one solid piece of titanium. And these are milled on a big fifth axis machine, which is really really pricey and how they're able to do all the intricate machining work on the handles. The pivots are bearing driven, ceramic bearings. And just the fact that this is channel bearings and, and tang pin I think uh, gives it a unique sound profile. Because that's a very uh, very unique set of specs for a Bally to have. There's not too many of them with that set of specs. I think maybe custom tack three and 87. But I do, uh, this has quickly become one of my favorite, favorite ballys and my favorite flippers. This has, has not left my pocket since I've got it. Or my, uh, my hat and leather sheath, I should say. Now let's jump to the next one. Now this, <clears throat> This is a Benchmade 63 with V1 Flytanium scales. This is actually the Bally I want to do a review on next because the past three Bally's I've done were Asian made Bally's and I want to do something American made next, but this is not a typical Flytie 63. This one has been modded and has IKBS style ceramic bearings modded into the pivots by Ben Parley and he did an absolute incredible job. Now, one thing I can't do is comment on a, uh, a Benchmade 63 stock. I've actually never handled a stock 6X with the, the stock steel scales, but I did handle this with, with the basic washer pivots and the fly tie scales, because that, uh, that was how I got it. I traded, I had a modded crimson rep um, Madlag did the handles and Edelman did a regrind and an acid wash on the blade. It was actually really, really sick, but 
I was determined to get my hands on a, a 63 and have bearings put in. But after I had the bearings put in, it totally changed the sound profile of the of this uh, of this bally. Now this is also a sandwich style construction bally. Zen pins. Now it's this is not hidden Zen pins. These are uh, screwed in through either side of the Zen pin and through the the handle slabs. But when this had just the basic washers. It sounded way different because there was like a lot of slop, a lot of handle play, a lot of like uh, like tap and chatter from just, you know, from blade rub because it was basic washer pivots. But after having the bearings installed, it totally changed the way this sounds because now there is... That's the latch pin rattling, but no rub, no tap, and... It almost like the the Zen pins sound like bouncy now because it, the tolerances are perfect and everything is perfectly smooth. So it gives it almost like a bouncy sound. That's all you're hearing is the the Zen pins bounce off the tang in the stock. But this sounds really really good, at least in my opinion. Again, this is all subjective, but I thought this might be a cool video to make. So next, this is also another Bally we, I did a full review on, so only briefly look at it, but this is a Brian Beagler, the Beagler Bladeworks Rock Style. Now, whatever issues I have with uh, Beagler, bla uh, Beagler Bally's aside, these are actually very, very good Bally's. They flip really well. They're, uh, the fit and finish is actually, well... The finish is very, very good, but the fit, that's the issue I have because I, I've gotten two uh, Beagler Bally's and both of them had very, very, very poor tolerances and tuning on the bushings specifically, and I had to fit and size new bushings myself for both of my uh, both of my Beagler Bally's. But after doing so, they're, they're perfect, just like any other bushing knife you would expect, you know. Torque down the pivots and no rub, no tap, and everything is smooth but it wasn't like that before uh, with stock like the stock bushings couldn't even thumb tighten anything without everything like just binding up but this is also a sandwich style construct uh, construction bally non hidden Zen pins bushing driven pivots that I had to fit in size but I rather like the way this bally sounds. It's mostly Zen pin, ni Zen pin knives that, that I typically like the way they sound the most. All right, so now we will go on to my second Beagler I acquired. This one I just went, when when Brian finished this and like did the protos and then and then finished a couple like production models or you know did a drop of these, I just absolutely loved the design. I liked the the machining pattern on the handles. I don't know. I just really liked it when he finished it and like you know when I saw it. But this also when I got it had uh, poorly fit bushings. I couldn't tighten the pivots without everything binding up. But thankfully, I already had extra bushings because when I ordered them for the rock style from USA Knife Maker, they make you order like six pairs or something. So I even still have an extra set. But so I just, you know, fitted a new set of bushings to this. And now again, everything is fully torqued down. The pivots, the Zen pin screws, everything's nice and tight and zero blade rub. But this has a very, very unique, a very unique sound profile, I think. It almost sounds like tinny, if that makes any sense. This is a pretty light bally. Pretty neutral. DC Bladeworks did a, uh, a set of full-length titanium spacers for his, and I bet 
I bet his probably feels fucking wonderful because I know mine could use just a tiny little bit of weight in the ass compared to compared to what it's got now. But also a sandwich style construction, non-hidden Zen pins, runs on bushings. And and having the perfectly tuned bushings is also what what gives this bally its sound because before I fit new bushings, I had it held together with like Loctite and Teflon tape, but no matter which way you slice it and dice it, even if even if you have it tuned perfectly, but have it tuned with Loctite and Teflon tape, it's not gonna sound the same as having perfectly tuned bushings with everything torqued down nice and tight. That just totally affects the way it feels, the way it flips, the way it sounds. And for the, the little bit of effort it takes to do that, it's infinitely worth it. Next, needing no introduction whatsoever, is the Alt Alpha Beast. This is from the most recent Blade HQ drop, the one that was like a month or two ago, whatever it was. I went with a Alt Blade. Now, I had a green 3.0 like maybe a year and a half ago, and I didn't really care for it, but I wasn't nearly as good at flipping as I am now. Not that I'm even good at flipping now, and I'm not doing anything bold or or daring on this video just because I want to show you guys what these ballys sound like and why they sound that way but when I had a 3.0 last I really didn't like it and I sold it after like two months but this one I fucking love I don't know if it was just my style my preferences have changed since then whatever it is though I'm not complaining about it now this is also a sandwich style construction bally most ballys you're going to see nowadays, especially like, you know, modern production ballys are going to be sandwich style construction. And if they're not, if they are channel style, they're not going to be, uh, not going to be cheap. This is a bushing driven tang pin bally. This is one of the other tang pin ballys. I really do enjoy the way it sounds. Now I had an infinity, uh, a regular blade infinity and a regular blade 3.0 before this. And both of those had developed rub and tap like rather quickly. But this one I've been flipping pretty regularly and I've dropped it a good, uh, good amount of times. And it is still, ha it still has perfect tolerances. So I'm hoping that, uh, hoping that they stay that way. my alpha beast almost it almost has like a, a squid ring to it but I don't need to spend too much time uh, looking at the alpha beast if you don't know an alpha beast like, what the fuck are you even doing? Seriously. Get an Alpha Beast. If you have not flipped one, get one. And, last, but most certainly not least, this is my Thai Basilisk. Now, Thai Basilisk. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now, I had a Thai bass and I had a G10 bass. And when I had them, I flipped the G10 bass way more than the Thai bass just because it, it, it scared me and I didn't want to fuck it up. But in the process of that, I ended up slightly chipping the tip of the blade on my G10 bass. So when I went to sell the G10 bass, I just swapped the blades out because I really like the way the, the, the bead blasted blade looks on the satin tie handles. And on top of that, I put, uh, put all black hardware on it. 
and I actually chained out the, changed out the pivots. These are these are still 3 16th pivots, but and there are still six uh, six thirty second screws, the T10 ones. They're called chain chain link bolts or something. They're called on on USA Knife Maker. They look like the like the the shitty knockoff no Loctite pivots, but they're not. They're just like uh, they're just tapped straight through and there's no like solid button head like the the stock pivots have but after putting these on it did change the way the the bally sounds a little bit it made like the click clack noises just a little bit more like high pitch if that makes any sense now the Thai basilisk is also a sandwich style construction bally by uh hom design jerry hom Again, if you don't know the Thai Basilisk, what the fuck are you doing? But on mine, I've got full length JG10 spacers and that also changed the way it sounded a lot. Opposed to the stock spacers. I don't think, like, I will never get rid of this knife. This is, without a doubt, one of my favorite flippers like hands down with the stock spacers it's it, the tie bass is pretty ass heavy because even with the full length g10 spacers there is still like a, a pretty safe amount of handle weight like a significant amount of handle bias even with the full length g10 spacers but it's just not like a unmanageable amount of handle bias at least for my preferences with the stock spacers Also tang pins. I just like the way this, it sounds. But guys, thanks for uh, thanks for spending the time to watch this video. If you made it this far, I hope you guys liked it. I just I uh, wanted to do something a little different. I was getting tired of doing unboxing and. And reviews I do have my next review planned so stay tuned for that because it will be coming I've been working quite a bit this past few weeks I'm actually on call this weekend too but it's looking like I'm gonna have the night to myself so figured I'd bang this video out this wasn't this wasn't my whole collection but this was a uh, this was a look at a good chunk of it So guys, I hope you uh hope you liked it. Otherwise, till next time. Peace out.